Welcome back to another video guys and today we are planning some maths so we're going to plan math lesson. However I thought this time I have done one of these before which I'll try to link up there and I kind of went through each individual step and copied and pasted everything so if you want in loads of detail then go have a look at that video and then obviously come back to this one for a bit more of an in-depth look at why I do each slide. So I'm going to try and go through each slide that I've already done so I've pre-made this lesson plan. I did it literally in the last 10 minutes and I'm going to go through about why each slide is there, what is the purpose of it is, why it's done that way. Hopefully it's give you a bit of an idea about what we're doing without obviously having to watch me copy paste everything and go through all the kind of formatting stages. So we're going to get started and the first slide is just the math slide plan template that basically just tell me why we do it, what it's there for, what this is. The second slide is our learning code. So at school we use a walks learning code so they want to learn, ask questions, listen to things, knows how to be independent and sticks at it. Just a reminder every lesson to say yep this is what we're doing, this is what we're working for, this is what we're trying to be at the start of each lesson. And then our big ideas are here. So these are the big ideas that link into our cornerstones topic and every single lesson links into one of these 10 big ideas. Now I'm not going to go into these in too much detail Detail. But we just try and have a little discussion and say, yep, this is what we're trying to do every lesson. We're trying to link things into humankind or processes, that kind of thing. Then the fourth slide, and again, these are all daily things that we discuss. These are our non negotiables. These, these are the things in every lesson we have to do. Now, we have changed these recently, so I do need to make a new one and get rid of the bit where it says LO because we no longer write the learning objective. I'll talk about that when I get to that slide in a minute, but I do need to change this soon. But yeah, we do go over and talk about these in every single slide, go over our learning objective every lesson, make sure we're staying nice and neat, keeping our presentation on pen and books, which I did talk about and again, I'll try and link that video here to a video about how to keep presentation up, how to keep your standards up throughout the school year. It's quite hard to do and it's something you have to really focus on every day. So then we go into the vocab and the vocabulary for each lesson. So for this lesson, we've got negative, minus, zero, higher, lower, difference and average. As you can tell probably already, we are looking at negative numbers this lesson. Then we have a little starter. So this is kind of like a revisit, revisit some work we've done previously. This doesn't link towards the lesson we're doing today. It's just a kind of reminder to refresh some number facts in children's brains. So this is, we're just going to convert sometimes how many weeks are in a year, how many days are in a week, how many minutes are in, that is an hour and a half. So I'm just going to add an equal sign because I missed one there. You might think they're quite straightforward things for a year five class, but it's just a quick refresher. Just literally that'd be a two minute activity. Tell your partner what are the missing gap, fill them in and then we'll move on. So this screen is where kind of the lesson starts for real. So this is talking about our learning objective. So I'll talk to the children about that way. We're going to understand and use negative numbers, solve different problems in the context of temperature. We'll talk about what that means and what it is we're going to be doing in this lesson. And then in pages 28 and 29, that's where the questions are in the textbook. So the children know when we get started, they know what pages to turn to so they can get ready straight away. And then after that we've got our teaching slides. So for this lesson there's lots of slides. We use a scheme called Abacus which gives us lots of different tools which if I flick between the tabs you can see them all up here. So I will use these web pages when I do my teaching. I won't be teaching off these slides because as you can see these aren't interactive whereas on the actual website they are interactive and I can change the numbers on the number line that kind of thing. But they're just there as reminders for me. So we're going to start off by looking at negative numbers just on a number line. And we're going to say to go up and down the number line, talk about what's changing, what changes as you go through it, why it's changing, how do we pronounce them? If we were to add two together, how do we find the difference? Just the basics about negative numbers that we've looked at many times before. Then the second slide you can see here is looking at temperature at Everest Base Camp. And again, it's using negative numbers, talking about what's the warmest temperature, what's the coldest temperature, and showing them that the warmest temperature is negative three, cold is negative 18. Obviously with positive numbers, that'd be the other way round and it's about showing them physical evidence of the difference and again I've got an interactive slide that I can then write on on here and show them different bits that we're talking about and then finally if I go to my third slide for teaching we're looking at temperature on a gauge here and looking at differences and again I've got an interactive page for that so I just put these screenshots on to remind me what to do and also if kind of the worst happens and for some reason the active loan website crashes and I can't go into it I've got the basics of what I need to do in that lesson and then I can kind of wing it a little bit from there because you have to sometimes when teaching but I've got the basic slides up and so I know what kind of things I was going to be teaching about. So that's those three slides and as you can see they are really really good, lots of options, lots of interactivity. I do like active learning the way they teach maths. It, these different pages they give you are really useful to get the kids involved and engaged and you get lots of kind of quick snap questions from it to answer them to get them engaged in the lesson. So then we have this blank page that says practice at the side and it's just blank grids. This is where I put up on the board how I want their work laid out. So we'll go through, we look at page 28 and 29, we'll pick a couple of questions out first and then I'll put on the screen on the board in front of the children how I want the work laid out how I want it to look it's just about making sure that presentation level stays at a high enough level for year five make sure they know what's expected of them because if they don't know what's expected they won't know how to complete it so I physically show them on the board how to do it and obviously I'll get them to answer the questions for me and we'll do it together and make sure they know everything that we are doing so that is our math lesson going through negative numbers that's why all those lines are there the last different bits are kind of the challenge bits at the end so this lesson's got a mastery checkpoint so this is going to show that if they've really understood negative numbers they'll be able to answer all these questions the mastery 
trick one at the top and the champion's challenge at the bottom for the really tricky ones. The, these are really good worded problems to kind of practice reasoning on the negative numbers. And yeah, they're just good little checkpoints to check which children have got a really good understanding, which ones haven't. We've got the success criteria, which I'll touch on about halfway through the lesson. And I'll say, look, if you think you're doing really good at this, check this off. Can you do all these four things? If you can do these four, then yep, you're doing well. Keep going. If you can't, which one are you stuck on? What do we need to work on to fix that? So it's just a nice little checkpoint to do half of the lesson. And then at the end of the lesson, we've got our reasoning questions. So we use IC reasoning by a guy called Gareth Metcalf. And they just have questions like this, where it helps them to check their work. And it just encourages them to kind of link things together. So 117 times six is 102. How do I then know 17 times 60? What about 170 times 60? How do I know the difference between all of those? And same for these, it's about helping children to check their work and just they'll have a really good understanding of the maths if they can check it and spot the mistakes that have been made. That'll prove they know what they're talking about. And then finally, we've got the assessment. So at the end of the lesson, during the lesson, I'll be going around with the other people in the classroom if I'm lucky enough to have them. And we'll be checking the work as they go. We're marking the work as they go, doing that live feedback, which I have spoken about before. It's so useful for the children to make sure they know what they're doing. They know the mistakes they're making, they know how it's going but then I'll also be going at the end of the lesson get the children to have their green pens out which is what we use to show when the children are marking their own work based off the answers when they've been given them and they'll be marking the questions that we haven't quite got around to do because I'll be able to get around every child in a lesson but I won't be able to mark all the work I'll just go through a marker selection and make sure they get most of them right and they kind of know what they're on about and if not then obviously I will help them and I'll assist them in understanding any misconceptions they've got but yeah at the end of the lesson they'll go through and mark all the work and give themselves an idea of how they've done in that lesson so that's just a quick overview of why we do all these slides, why we put them in, what they're there for. Hopefully it's helped you have a look at how we do teaching and it's all about that same routine that we do in every lesson. So we do a revisit at the start where we go back and do it, look at something we haven't done. I teach some things, so I'll teach them how to do things, I'll show them what we're expecting in our lesson. Then we'll do a bit of practice all together and do a few questions of different things together. We'll show them how to do the work and then it's time for them to individually do the work themselves before at the end we do our replies and we kind of do our mastery checkpoints and really show off that understanding we've got. So as always guys, I hope you found this helpful. Do leave any comments if you've got any questions about the maths that we do or I'd love to hear how you guys do maths, how you teach it. Have you done abacus? Did you enjoy it? I just I love hearing about different teaching styles, so do let me know. And as always, I will be back on a Tuesday, a Friday and a Sunday with a new video. And thank you so much for all the support recently. I will see you very soon.